I'm here in Merritt Island with Cordell Roll, and uh, you're spearheading a big fundraiser for the Bahamas, specifically an area that you're from. So could you tell me a little bit about uh, your, your family, where you're from, what you've done to this point, and kind of what the goals are for helping the Bahamas you know, get back to some form of normalcy? Yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's been quite a journey so far. Uh, Grand Cabaco is a tiny little island on the northeast side of the Bahamas. Um, was directly in line with Hurricane Dorian uh, mm -hmm. when it came through, so the devastation has been uh, unbelievable. Um, it's a place that only real fishermen, um, people want to get off the beaten path, tend to go. Um, so a lot of private boaters end up there. Uh, there's no airport, but there's a private island very near the uh, Grand Key that people can fly into and then boat over to Grand Key. But growing up, it was amazing. Absolutely kid heaven. I mean, imagine somewhere you can go play all day, run around. You can't get lost. There's nowhere to go. And uh, it's a community where everyone is your family. Maybe not by blood, but definitely by just relation and being there. So everyone's my aunt, my uncle, my cousin. Um, and it's just a place where I could go in anyone's house, have lunch, have dinner. They can come into mine. And it was never any kind of a problem. Uh, about 500 people on the island, one school. Um, you go there from K to 12, <laughs> and if you're lucky, you can go to a bigger island or be as lucky as I am to come to the United States and you know start a life, go to college, serve in the military. Um, but Grand Key is just my heart, my soul. Um, I lived there until about fourth grade, till I moved to the United States here. My mom is American, and uh, I got, like I said, the opportunity to come here and go to school and uh, realize my own dreams. So being able to be in this position where I can go back to Grand Key um, bring every resource possible to make sure that they can recover from such a travesty. And you have already made it there once since Dorian passed through. So you've seen the impact and uh, we're going to have some photos to show on that. So I really want to hear, you know, the story so people know. People don't believe a lot of what they're seeing and, and feeling and they don't know what to do either to get involved. And, and obviously you are boots on the ground. You have family and friends still there and you've actually been there and you're going back yes sir so tell me from your first visit uh, what what did you see what did you experience um honestly it was one of the best days of my life you know pulling up and seeing the devastation is one thing but hearing my brother call my name from the dock as soon as we came through the harbor was amazing and my dad was waiting there we had um, probably around 60 boats show up all together with supplies just a few days after the storm so um, there wasn't a low head anywhere everyone was so excited to see us thanking us um, they hadn't had any representation from the government since about a week before the storm mm -hmm. so if it wasn't for these private boaters um, it would be a horrible story we had zero loss of life but every home was affected on the island and uh, is there anyone specific that you were kind of meeting with and talking to and, and any specific stories about them you know, being there as Dorian passed through, did you did you hear? Or... Yeah, so um, as soon as we got to the island, we started offloading the boat, and one of my main things was I got to get to my immediate family. So like I said, I saw my brother and my father, um, and then we went to see my grandfather, who was uh, blind, and um, his mobility has is, is really shrunk over the years, so he kind of just sits um, around. <laughs> but um, we went to Rosie's place. Uh, he's got a couple villas there, all concrete buildings. Um, so the walls were able to stay up and I spoke with him and just hearing him and my brother speak it, it, it brought me to tears um, I wish I could have recorded it it was one of those moments my brother started speaking I had my camera in my hand but I was just looking in awe and hearing his story but what he shared was it was amazing um, he told us about the night of the storm when it first started or the morning of the storm and the winds were whipping through and pieces of the house started falling and my grandfather and father were in that villa like I spoke, excuse me, spoke about. But my brother stayed in the, our home wow. and was literally trying to nail things together as parts of it were flying apart. And um, if, when we share these photos, you'll see that um, the front part of our house completely caved in while the back remained steady. And even right now, that's where he's staying. He's still staying in that house. Um, water damage is insane. Um, but again, he was just so happy. He's just said, this is just the resolve of the Bahamian people. We treat everyone who comes to this island like family. And because of that, when something like this happened, 
we had all these private citizens of America show up with so much support. We had to have had nearly 100,000 pounds of supplies that day between wow. those 60 boats. Um, every boat carried at least 2,000 pounds. Um, some of the larger boats, triple engine 42 footers that came, um, were carrying five, 6,000 pounds. Uh, so it was just amazing to see. Everybody was out there. Um, people were playing music from their boats. Um, and it was just, it was beautiful. You know, I've got, I've got a pretty funny uh, picture of my cousin. Um, someone brought some Chick-fil-A and she was eating that thing like it was the best thing ever. From America. They, From America. They boated it over. Yes, yes they did. <laughs> they boated it over, kept it in the cooler, and uh, it, it was amazing. That's, that's awesome. Um, and so that was about two weeks ago now, and that was roughly a week after Dorian had passed. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And um, and the weather is, is the tropics are still going crazy, obviously, right now. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we're just hoping to get through the season. But that's not stopping as far as getting supplies in, trying to get, you know, things rebuilt, take care of anybody who needs, you know, medical help and things like that. So tell me a little bit, what are your plans going forward? Well, you're right about the weather. I, it's not working with us. So we've made one trip so far. A couple other citizens have gotten some flights into Walker Ski. Um, I'm working with a local business uh, who has a private plane that we'll be going over on Sunday again with some more immediate supplies. Um, working with a, a group down in Vero Beach who has got a cargo ship right now that we're loading supplies on tonight uh, to send over to Grand Key. That cargo ship is going to carry nothing but building materials. Wow. Um, and it's just our first load. We need a lot more. 92 homes on uh, Grand Key. Like I said, everyone was affected. And moving forward, the weather's going to throw some stuff at us, but no matter what, we're going to get over there. If the waves are big, we're just going to get a bigger boat. <laughs> and uh, building materials, would you say that's the biggest, most important need right now? Because people, a lot of people are looking to get, they don't know how, they don't know what to do. And we've seen from prior disasters that just, you know, a flood of random supplies is, it can actually be harmful as opposed to helpful. So you're on the ground, you've seen it. What do you think is most beneficial? It is. Uh, first thing I want to say is thank you so much for everyone who's brought any type of item to us. I really appreciate it. But you're right, we do need to direct um, the items that we need now. Mm -hmm. So food, water, um, we've done a great job of getting that. Clothing, um, we're very good on that. Hygiene products, the same thing. For now, it is how do we get shelter? All right, we've got the immediate needs. Now we need to get a roof, a stable roof over their heads. Mm. Uh, so we're looking for plywood. We're looking for any type of lumber, electrical wiring. If you you know recently did remodel and have some extra outlets there, we need that. Wow. The basics, everything, drywall, um, molding on the floor, um, just anything you can spare. You know, it might end up looking like a very colorful house because it has parts from 30 different remodels, but the, the fact is that we're pulling together every resource we can, and we're gonna get this island back up and running. Awesome, and you have been putting in, you know, you don't even <laughs> sleep, you, you have a full-time job, Feel you have like a family, <laughs> and you have just been non-stop. I've seen what you've been doing, and uh, so you're physically getting materials over there, you have a GoFundMe, what are some people, you know, that are seeing this, what can they do today to help uh, at this, Kind of outskirt island that's not getting a lot of attention but is devastated and, and that you have obviously a personal history and relationship and family there absolutely so I, I do understand there's a lot of gofundmes out there a lot of uh, relief efforts and i'm focused on grand key it's a small area and i think with the right of support we can make this happen and rebuild them so we have started a gofundme if anyone's interested they can look me up on facebook i've made my profile public right now that's cordell roll um, we've also built out a website called rebuildgrandk.com. Uh, you'll be able to go there, keep up with our efforts. We're going to be uh, posting the blog through there. We have some images uh, from our first trip and all our continuous trips. Um, if you're ever curious about where the money's going, I have a great explanation uh, on the site that lets you know that um, what we're buying, what we're doing with your money. We're not a 501c, uh, uh, but we are a group of citizens that are trying to respond together to help our neighbors in need. Our next stop, hopefully we'll be able to continue this conversation in a week or two, kind of get an update uh, as this is going to take a while, right? It's not going to be something that's going to be yeah. fixed overnight. And, and that's even just hoping that we don't have future too bad of storms and, and, and all that. So 
you know, is there anything else going forward that, that people should know or that you want to share? Absolutely. Uh, if you live in Brevard County or even if you live anywhere, October 17th, uh, our community business leaders, um, local public servants have gotten together and they've organized a fundraiser at a number of restaurants. You can find it again on the site um, that will be participating and they pledge to donate a certain percentage of all their funds that night to uh, to our relief efforts. And it's, it's gonna be huge. So um, please check out the site, uh, look at all the different businesses. We're covering all of Bavara County and if we can, Get another county involved or anyone else involved will gladly take it because uh, these people need our help. Mm -hmm. uh, the option of calling a home insurance that's sadly not available for where we are in Grand Key Bahamas. Well, I really appreciate it. I love what you're doing, and uh, we just want to be there to support. And we're going to continue to you know see what we can pull. I know you're bringing the community together. You got a lot of work still ahead of you, and uh, we're here to help you. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll just keep the conversation going. Thank you. Thank you so much.